That's the message today. God is calling you beyond complaining. I would rather God be exalted. I would rather God be magnified. I want God to be happy. I want God to get the glory. I want you to be glorified, God. I want you to be glorified, God. I want you to be lifted up, God. I don't want God to ever hear me complain ever again. You see God standing on the rock just waiting because he knows what will happen if Moses would have did exactly what he told him to do. Thank you, Jesus. See, it's easy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Right after God meets Moses in the burning bush, I remember that? We see God calling Moses to go talk to Pharaoh. God then puts the smack down on Egypt. God convinces Moses that he's with him by showing him some miracles. As if the burning bush, as if that's not enough. Can you imagine a bush being burned and there's no black smoke? There's no smoke. And the bush remains, it's not being deteriorated. It's not being uh, destroyed at all. If that wasn't enough, God has some more miracles to show him. God introduces himself to Moses. He shows up with miracles. He's exhibiting his power and he's able to do and he's showing Moses, I can do what no man can do. This is the power of the almighty God that we serve. Moses wanted a sign. He wanted to know, how do I know that you, God, is God? Because in Egypt, they have a whole bunch of gods. I want to know if you're the God of gods. As if the burning bush that's being consumed ain't enough. We see in Exodus 4, the Lord said furthermore unto him, since the burning bush ain't enough to prove to you that I'm God, put your hand, put now thine hand, in thy bosom. Put your hand in your bosom. My shirt is tight. He put his hand in the bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. God is showing off with his miracle working power. This is what God does. He's able to take Moses' hand and turn it to the color of snow. How is that possible? Can you imagine if I took my heavy melanated hand put it in my bosom. If I took out a snow colored hand, y'all have run right through the wall to get out of here. Now imagine the fear, imagine the fear over Moses, not knowing if this would be permanent. Cause right away he looks at his hand. The first thing that come to his, his mind is, Oh my gosh, my hand isn't black anymore. I like my hand being the same color of the rest of my body. So God told him, put your hand back in there again. He put his hand back in his bosom again and he plucked it out of his bosom and behold it was turned again as the other flesh. If it was me, I would be walking around with my hand stretched out all day long so I can watch it to make sure it don't turn back white. I would be waking up in the middle of the night and checking, checking my hand. I would ask God at that moment, can I borrow a mirror? Because there's no way of knowing that this leprosy that made my skin turn white, there's no way of knowing that this miracle that eliminated my melanin Without a mirror, there's no way of knowing if it spread to my face. After seeing these miracles, just a few verses later, God is about to kill Moses. It says in Exodus 4.24, And it came to pass, by the way in the inn, he's letting you know where it happened at, that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. It's just a few verses later. Then Zipporah, Zipporah is Moses' wife, she took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son. And all the men said, praise the Lord. And, it, and he cast it at his feet and said, surely a bloody husband you are to me. J Jethro, who's Moses' wife, father, so jo uh, Moses' father-in-law, told Moses not to circumcise his oldest son, Gershom. And this was the opposite of what the Lord commanded Moses to do. After seeing the power of God in a bush, turning a rod into a snake, turning your skin white, you decide to disobey God, that God, the almighty God. When Zipporah saw that God was about to kill her husband, she circumcised her son through the bloody foreskin at Moses' feet. That's a good wife. An Egyptian shall know that I am the Lord, Exodus 7, 5, when I stretch forth my hand unto Egypt, and bring out the children of Israel from among them. We know God took down the world power at that time. Egypt was in control of the whole world. They were ruling everything. 
He took them down with stupid stuff. Lice, frogs, flies. God brought his people out of Egypt. God killed the Egyptians' firstborn sons and their cattle. God killed all of Pharaoh's army and brought his people into the wilderness of Africa as a proving ground before they entered into the promised land. After seeing all the miracles that God did, and none of those things, none of those plagues happened to Israelites. Why? How do you complain? How do you complain after seeing all of that stuff? A little while later, you find God's chosen people complaining about water. In 17, the 17th chapter of Exodus, it says, And the people thirsted there for water. And the people murmured against Moses and said, What reason did you have to bring us out of Egypt? To kill us and our children and our cattle with us? You, you brought us out of there to kill us with thirst? God turned water into blood. Right? God moved water to the side so you can walk through. And the Bible says it was dry. He even dried up the ground where he walked through. Your sandals wasn't even wet. Do you really think him providing water for you is a problem after what you just saw him do with water? In Numbers 20 verse 2 it says, And there was no water for the congregation. And they gathered themselves together against Moses. Now you're ready to fight the man of God and Aaron. And the people quarreled with Moses. And they spoke saying, I wish to God that we would have died when our kinfolk died before the Lord. Why did you bring us? Why did you bring the congregation of the Lord into this wilderness? Why did you bring us here, Moses? So that we and our cattle can die? Is that why you brought us here? And why have you made us to come up out of Egypt to bring us into this evil place? It's a place of no seed or figs or vines or pomegranates. Neither is there any water to drink. Imagine God's blood pressure. Because reading this raised my blood pressure. Imagine God's blood pressure. Listening to this. What is wrong with Israelites? Why do God's people have a propensity? Why do God's people love to complain? What is wrong with God's people? God creates situations. Listen carefully. See if you can catch this. God creates situations so he can deliver you from it. Don't focus on the situation. Focus on the situator, if that's a word. God is the creator, and he is the creator of this situation. He then becomes the only deliverer because he alone was the creator. God creates situations that only he can deliver you from. God knows these bodies, these machines that we try to beautify, these machines that contain our true essence. These bodies, this body is not our true essence. Our soul is our true essence. He created these bodies knowing that we need water. God is a provider. I know God would have provided for me. All I had to do was shut up. Imagine instead of complaining, if they would have been thankful that God just delivered them from slavery. Think about this. Your oldest child is still alive. There is no such thing as a firstborn Egyptian anywhere on earth. There is no such thing as a firstborn Egyptian child on earth. And here, an Israelite firstborn child is complaining. That's pretty bad. Here is a mother that still has her firstborn child. That mother is complaining at the same time that a woman in Egypt is wailing. Still, because that pain don't go away. Listen to how they complained. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said unto them, I wish to God we would have died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt. You know, when we sat by the flesh pots, you know, pots that cook meat. And when we ate bread until we got full, you brought us from Egypt into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. So you telling me you would rather be a slave for food? You would rather kindle a fire in a God that can do some pretty bad stuff because you're not getting your way. God's not going to let you die if you belong to God. If he, God has his hand on you, you ain't got nothing to worry about. They complained about food, bread, 
As if God can't rain down bread from heaven. This is why you should never open your mouth and put anything in it without thanking God first. You ever see a kid complain about food? You ever see your kid complain about food? I don't want that. It's nasty. We know there are people in the world starving. And they will kill you for the food that you throw away. People in the world are praying for food, but God hears you murmuring about the type of food. Listen, every parent that's raising a kid, teach them not to complain. Teach them to give thanks. Because when you end up back in the wilderness, God murdered his own people for complaining. He went and got them and then murdered them for complaining. In Numbers 14, 29, it says, your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness. This wilderness. You're going to die right here. Everybody within all 12 tribes from the age 20 and up which have murmured against me, going to be dead right here, right where you complained. I believe it's the worst thing you can do. Praise the wicked. But those who keep the law resist the wicked. God can deliver you from something, and although you out of it, you still complain. He can deliver you from a husband that's going upside your head, but you miss the neighborhood you was living in, so you complain. God can give you a job, but because they require you to come into their office rather than work from home, God can give you a car. But because you got to get new tires on the car, you complain. Moses, take this rod. You know, the same rod that you separated the water from the Red Sea. That's a pretty nice rod, right? It can do some miraculous stuff, turn into snake, all type of stuff. Take that rod, go gather the assembly together, including you and your brother Aaron. Listen to these instructions, Moses. Speak to the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth its water. And you should bring forth to them water out of the rock. See that? That's how you should give the congregation and their beasts something to drink. Simple instructions. God gave instructions to Moses so God can be sanctified in the eyes of his people. How do you sanctify God in the eyes of Israel? And Moses took the rod from before the Lord, as he commanded him. Okay, no problem. Then God told Moses, listen carefully. I'm going to stand in front of you. Right there on top of the rock. I'm going to stand right there. When you see me standing there, tap the rock with your rod, and water's going to come out. So that the people may drink. Simple instructions. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together. Y'all, come on. Come over here. I need everybody to stand up over here. Line up over here. Uh, short people in the front. Uh, tall people standing in the back. I need y'all to stand here. And he said unto them, Listen now, you rebels. Must we fetch water out of this rock? Oh, Moses. That's a mistake. And Moses lifted up his hand. And with his rod, he smoked the rock twice. And the water started bursting out. And the congregation drank. And their beasts Two, Moses rebelled. The instructions were specific. Speak and strike. You were required to engage in two activities, but your behavior neglected the instructions. He struck twice. He was supposed to speak to the, to the rock, then strike it so God gets the glory. He broke the rock instead. Would you have been able to obey two instructions from God? From God. God's given you two instructions. God Almighty, who you've seen do some pretty horrible stuff, gave you two instructions. You got two men of God that couldn't follow simple instructions. You allowed the pressures of life. You allowed the details of the world to cloud your judgment. And you made a decision based on your feelings, how you felt at the moment. You made a decision based on what's happening because you weren't happy. Don't you know obedience is better than sacrifice? In Numbers 20, verse 12, And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron. He said, Because you didn't believe me to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, that's the reason you ain't going to bring these people into the land that I gave them. I'm not going to let it happen. You're not going to bring them into the land that I gave them. It'll never happen, Moses. Listen to what God said. You are, are, are my chosen people. Yes, they're complaining. 
But you can't treat God's chosen people any kind of way. God won't allow it. But they were complaining, God. God won't allow it. Nobody is allowed to do anything to you if you're God's chosen people. Listen, although they're complaining, got Moses in trouble. Moses stole God's glory. God will kill his own people that he just delivered from slavery. You left slavery just to die? Complainers die. Is death in the wilderness the promise of the, as the promised land? Is that where God promised him to die in the wilderness? How did you miss out on a promise from God? Think about what I'm trying to say to you. I don't want to be doing anything. I don't want to be engaged in anything. I don't want to say anything that will cause me to miss a promise from God. And the Lord said unto Moses, come up here in this mountain, Moses. See the land which I given unto the children of Israel? You see it? You ain't going. Imagine, Moses wasn't a slave. He wasn't a slave in Egypt. God sent him to Egypt. He went through all of that to end up hearing God say, I'm going to kill you. And the promised land that I promised you, that I promised you all, go look over there. You ain't going. God prepared a miracle and Moses destroyed it. Moses destroyed God's glory. God gets the glory because of the miracle. If you eliminate the miracle, I want to see that miracle. I want to see God provide. I would have loved to see God save me from thirst. Moses stole God's glory. God gave Moses instructions so his people, so the children of Israel can praise him. Now later on, the Lord says, if you don't praise him, that rock that I told Moses to speak to, it'll speak for you. I don't know about you, but I don't want no rock crying out for me. I'll praise him even if I don't feel like it. I'll praise him through the hard times, through the sleepless nights. Oh my God, I'll praise God in the midnight hour. If folk are laughing at me through sickness, I'm still going to praise my king because he's worthy. Forget that stupid rock, Lord. I'll praise you. God is talking about replacing you with a rock. God stood by on top of that rock waiting. God stood on that rock waiting for his praise that he never got because of flesh. And it's not till he goes to Jerusalem on a donkey does he get that praise. This is why prophecy is important because this was prophesied and Zechariah prophesied, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming unto you. He is just and having salvation, humble, riding on a donkey, Zechariah prophesied that the Savior will be riding into the promised land on a donkey. That's my king. That's my salvation. That's my redeemer. And I'm going to praise him. But he's riding a donkey. They took palm branches. And they went forth to meet him. They put the palm branches on the floor. And they shaking the palm branches. And they cried, Hosanna. Blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Hosanna means please save us. Hosanna is a cry for help. Hosanna is the opposite of complaining. The first time God is getting complaints and he never got his praise. Now he's getting his praise by you saying Hosanna. That's why Jesus said, if any man be thirsty, come to Jesus. When they were thirsty, they should have came to God. Whatever you need. Get off the phone. Stop wearing people's ears out. Come to Jesus. If any man be thirsty, don't let a rock cry out and say, Hosanna. You cry out and say, God, help me. Talk to God. You can only worship God once you've been acquainted with his awesomeness. If God never healed anybody, you can't praise him for healing. You don't know that's part of his power. And even if you don't, he, he, if he doesn't heal you, you can still worship him for having the power to heal. You can worship God for being a healer, even if he doesn't heal you. At that point, there's no room to complain because you're worshiping God because he's a healer. The history of the Bible, accompanied with your faith, allows you to be a worshiper. You can read it, you can believe it, and you can act on it. We know God is a savior. Thank God for saving me from sin. Thank you, Jesus. I know God is a deliverer. His ability to turn things around. His ability to move things out of the way. There ain't nothing you wrapped up in. There's no situation God can't deliver you from. Have you tried Jesus? 
I'm talking about a full try. I'm talking about calling him from your belly and don't care who hears you. Come and say, Hosanna one day, Lord, help me. Instead of complaining, open your mouth and say, Lord, help me. Instead of complaining, say, Hosanna. The Bible says, and think not to say within yourselves, we got Abraham as our father. Don't think just because you're an Israelite, you are right. Bars. Don't think just because you're an Israelite, you are right. For I say unto you that God is able. He's able. See how powerful God is? God is able to take these rocks and raise up children unto Abraham. What? God is trying to bless you, but he wants the glory. He'd rather get it from you, but he's so awesome. A rock will see God show up in the flesh and say, oh man, I'll praise you. That guy deserves praise. Go ahead and complain, humans, says the rock, because God is worthy. I'll praise him. If you're going to complain, if you're going to complain, go threaten a rock. Tell it, don't cry out. Because if the rock cries out, it might praise God better than you. Rocks don't complain. But God said they can praise him if you don't. If you're going to complain, don't let the rock hear you. It'll take your place. Oh, God, I'll praise you. Oh, God, I'll give you thanks. Oh, God, I'll follow your instructions. Luke 19, 40 says, And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that. If the people you hear praising me now, this is God talking. He said, if they should hold their peace, the rocks would immediately cry out. Moses stole God's glory, breaking that rock because of complainers. But now they're praising me with palm branches. That praise will continue even if you don't do it. Even if you want to complain, I'm going to have these rocks take your place. God dwells in the midst of praise. If you would just stop praising God, the rocks know. The rocks know that Jesus is their creator. The rocks know that Jesus is the situator. They'll take your place. That's the kind of God I serve. God is coming in the city to save you. He's coming in the city to die. God is coming back real soon. It's time to praise him. Is a situation in your life right now that you're dealing with right now i want to remind you i want to rehearse in your hearing god is the situator he created the situation if you're not going to praise him today go threaten a rock tell it don't cry out don't take my place rock go gather up all the rocks and throw them in the sea so god won't hear them praising him while you're complaining if you can't think of anything that god has done for you if he didn't wake you up this morning, if you don't have eyes to see, then thank him for being in your right mind. Thank him that you're not crazy. Thank him that you're not gone out of your mind and you don't know where you're at and you don't know your name. This thing that you're going through can take you out. But don't steal God's glory. Watch him deliver you. Watch him show you his glory. I know you're sick. I know you didn't get the promotion. I know your car just got repoed. God is standing on a rock waiting for his praise. Do you guys catch what I'm saying? Don't leave him on red. Don't leave him standing there. Follow his instructions. Don't complain and praise him. That's it. The promised land was once controlled by Egypt. Did you know that? The promised land was Canaan. All of that land, Egypt controlled all of that. But Egypt lost control of it when God created a situation called a drought or a famine. The same famine that got the Israelites in Egypt in the first place. You see that? God was moving your enemies out of their place at the same time. You thought the famine was a bad thing. Yes. You thought it was a bad thing. But God was using that same famine to get you to Egypt so he could come and get you. And he's using that same famine to get the people that's in uh, the land of Canaan out. And to get Egypt out out of control of that land so when you run from when i take you from egypt you won't be still in egypt yes. god murdered his own people for complaining they died slow and stupid it should have took him a couple weeks he made them walk in circles for 40 years how much glory will god get out of my life how many times have god already heard me complain i got to do something about that i'm going to change the way i talk if it's raining, I'm going to thank God I got an umbrella. Oh, man. Oh, gosh, I got to wake up early in the morning. You better be glad you wake up. I ain't got no money. But did you eat this week? It's hot outside. Thank God it ain't hotter. 
What, what can change so that your words will change? God is trying to move you to a better situation, but you got to let go of your current. You got to let go of your current situation that was created by the situator. If a guy won't treat you right, you're going to stay with him and complain? You complain about chores. Wait till you're grown and you got to do all the chores. Complaining is easy. It comes natural. God is calling the saints to a higher calling. That's the message today. God is calling you beyond complaining. I would rather God be exalted. I would rather God be magnified. I want God to be happy. I want God to get the glory. I want you to be glorified, God. I want you to be glorified, God. I want you to be lifted up, God. I don't want God to ever hear me complain ever again. You see God standing on the rock just waiting because he knows what will happen if Moses would have did exactly what he told him to do. If Moses would have obeyed, God would have got the glory. You would have saw God. This wasn't too much time before that that God had to use his hand and cover Moses so that Moses wouldn't see his awesome power. God is now ready to introduce himself to everybody. God is ready to show everybody, this is me. I did that. I'm standing right here. That water came out because of me. I created the situation. I'm going to be your deliverer. But Moses stole it. And you guys complained. What kind of situation do we have here? What can we do differently? What can we do better? Can we stop complaining? I know this ain't the best time in your life. I know what you're going through is hard. And we are here to help you through tough times. Keep moving. Don't give up. Everything going to be all right. Don't give up. It's all right. Thank you, Jesus. If you want us to pray for you or pray with you, reach out. Contact us on, 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 on the website, covenantservice.com. Thank you, Jesus. Talk to us. Let's, talk, let's work this out. Let's figure out if we, can, if we can stop complaining. If we can give God glory instead. If we can lift up the Lord instead. If we can make sure God gets his glory instead. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm.